This is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Teresa, for that. You'll never walk alone. Very special to someone in our church, Rose. Bring Bernie. Thank you for that. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Welcome once again to Trinity Online Worship. I'm trying to remember who has already checked in and said that you're watching. I see right now Rachel and uh, Joanne, and I also noticed uh, Bob and Kathy and uh, and uh, Carol. So uh, thank you for watching with us or watching our worship today. Thank you for worshiping with us in this online worship service. This is actually our ninth online live worship broadcast since we started sheltering in place uh, our first one was on march the 15th and i've learned a little bit about you know how to do this and so it's become a little bit more um, comfortable but i have come to realize one thing very clearly and that is that i'm never going to make it as a tv preacher so welcome once again to Trinity Online Worship. For today's worship, uh, Tom Leip is on guitar and also uh, Bill Stanley is going to be uh, teaming up with our music director, Teresa Woody, in a duet that they have recorded and that she will be singing along with. So thanks to all of you for the music today and for making our worship a richer experience with that. Of course, Beginning notes for our online worship. The order of worship is at, on our website at commonchurch.com forward slash OFW. And you can follow along if you need an outline for worship in order to do that. Also, our children's worship sheet should have been emailed to you. If you didn't get that, please uh, send a message here or let me know. And we will make sure that you get the children's worship sheet that is included in the email each week. Hey, Joanne, Joanna, how you doing? Ellie, good to see you. I hope everybody's watching there. Uh, children's worship sheet. Then also, just a reminder for our prayer time online worship, we're not using last names in order to make sure that people can stay safe and their identities can stay safe. So just a reminder of that whenever you list someone for prayer time, if you want to do that now, you can go ahead and do it, and I'll try to make a note of those. But just use first names, and you can say a word about uh, what the prayer is you'd like to request for that. Along those lines, during our pastoral prayer time today, it will be a responsive prayer time. And I will let you know at the beginning of that what the response is. And uh, so we will do it a little bit differently today, but I wanted to make sure that we included some important uh, people in our lives during that prayer time today. And also, please include any celebrations that you want to share. Uh, you can do so in the messages also with this. If you did get your name submitted for honoring and remembering mothers today, we will do that, uh, probably sending those out to you, those booklets out to you, so that you have a copy of those. I was hoping to be able to deliver those today, but I don't have that in front of me, so my apologies for that to the women of Trinity. Uh, of course, also on our website, as well as on our Facebook page, you can find uh, information about what's coming up during the week where we're trying to connect with people online. Everything from our Wednesday night prayer time and check-in, which is at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. You can find the information for that at our Facebook group, which is the Trinity UCC Community Corner. You can also uh, find there other information that may be coming up for children, uh, Zoom meetings and that kind of thing. Our prayer meeting, our prayer time and check-in is by Zoom, so please join us for that. We've had 8, 10, 12, sometimes a little more, a uh, few more people. And uh, so anyway, just uh, stay in touch with the Facebook pages and you'll know what is coming up. 
Graduates, this has been, this is sort of a month of graduations and honoring graduates and remembering uh, those who are graduating. Uh, last Sunday, I shouted out college grads. Today, I'm going to celebrate, uh, shout out to our folks who are completing graduate level degrees, a couple of those. So we'll do that during the prayer time and celebration time. And then next Sunday, I want to honor the high school graduates. So if you are graduating from high school, send me a message this week or send a message to our office. Let us know what your plans are for graduation and what that looks like for you. And we will make sure that, I uh, hope you can join us today during our live online worship and we'll shout out to you, honoring your hard work and graduation from high school. Uh, this year, of course, our congregation is celebrating 10 years as an open and affirming United Church of Christ, and essentially what that means is this, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, no matter who you love or how you identify or where you're sheltering in place or how that is going, we welcome you into the full life and ministry of the congregation, and we hope together that you'll come and join us. Uh, some of you once again, some of you for the first time. We look forward to meeting you. Uh, you should also know a couple of things about our worship service. One, I haven't said this before, and every Sunday whenever I'm talking with consistory or with Bill, the consistory president, I remember to say this, and he says, you know, you really ought to say that during our online worship. So I'm remembering it today, and that is that we usually have about 20 people watching during our live broadcast. Sometimes we've had as many as 30 or 35. Uh, but then during the week, other people watch it. Some of you are saying to me, yeah, I'm watching it later on uh, because it just doesn't, doesn't work for whatever the time is that uh, you are trying to watch it during the live broadcast. And sometimes we'll have, for instance, this past week, we had views on that worship service. We have had, you know, I've gotten as many as 300 views, unless Liddell's preaching, and then we get four or 500 views. So, uh, <laughs> um, but thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I see Dan there. I see Lonnie also. Um, so hello to all of you. And know also, I have to say this, that we do have permission for streaming the music today online during our service, and that's a one license A one four one five two I just want you to know that we have to get permission to use the music that we use online and just uh, another shout out to those of you who are stocking the community pantry box outside our door uh, I know kids swoop really filled it up on Tuesday and by the way Ken I came by a few hours after that to put some water in and it was already uh, a lot of that food had already been uh, uh, gone to a good home. So thank you so much for that. And others who have dropped things off, Christina also told me yesterday that she was planning on dropping some stuff off today. And so uh, continue to stock that. I know Dan, Hart, Dan does that on a regular basis, and thank you. And others have done so. So uh, again, that is a lifeline for a lot of people who are otherwise oftentimes falling through the cracks of help in our society and in our community, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll move on to our responsive intent in just a moment, but let me catch my breath and you can catch yours. Let's center ourselves.
Our responsive intent is based on 1 Peter 2, verses 4 through 8. And those of you who are here today, uh, and those of you who out there in online worship land have uh, the order in front of you, join me and just everyone can say together the responsive call to worship or the responsive intent. Like the multi-hued pebbles gathered onto a beach, so we come from many places. Like river stones smoothed from life's surges or chipped in the world's torrents, so we come worn and wounded. Like precious stones chosen, crafted, and valued, so we come cared about and loved by God. Like the stones of a building, so God brings us together. Come as living stones into God's presence. We come, we gather to worship God. You recall that scripture from 1 Peter saying that the stone the builders rejected has become the chief stone, the chief cornerstone. We'll pick up on that theme just a little bit as we go today. Again, happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day always comes as a time for me and thinking about the worship and the sermon. And it's a little bit difficult because I know so many people in, our, in, in my life, uh, people who are mothers and people who have been mothers, which comes with everything that life brings. It comes with joy and it comes with celebration, but it also comes with grief and difficulty and pain. There were a couple of scriptures that really became meaningful for me in the last few weeks in thinking about Mother's Day. And one of those we just heard a few weeks ago leading up to Easter during Holy Week, and that was during, in the Passion narrative from John 19, verses 25b through 27, which reads, But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple, the one he loved, standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Another scripture also becomes meaningful for me on this particular Mother's Day this year, different from all the other Mother's Days, of course, that we have experienced or imagined. And this scripture is from Mark, the seventh chapter, verses 24 through 30. Hear these words. From there he set out and went into the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, and yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about Jesus, and she came and bowed down at his feet. And now the woman was a Gentile, a, a Syrophoenician was her origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And then Jesus says something strange in this passage that gives us pause. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It leaves me wondering, what in the world was Jesus thinking about this? But she answered Jesus, not to be undone. She answered, yes, sir, but even the dogs under the table eat the crumbs that fall from the children's plate. 
And then he said to her, for that saying, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. As I think about this story, the story of Jesus interchanged with a Syrophoenician woman who came to him out of her need, her need for healing for her daughter who had a demon, a spirit, an unclean spirit. In that day and time, I don't think it's a stretch to recognize that what might have been going on with her daughter was simply some sort of mental health disorder that people didn't understand. That caused her daughter not to be able to fit in very well into a society that doesn't understand mental health or disorders associated therewith. So I have to tell you that I thought about this story leading up to Mother's Day as I was also thinking about May being Mental Health Awareness Month. And what I notice in this story is that Jesus, while on the one hand, or for, at, at, at the beginning of this conversation with this mother, doesn't want to change his mind, doesn't see what her request is important enough, perhaps. But to his credit, in that moment, he does change his mind. He does see that this is one, a legitimate woman, with a legitimate need for her daughter's health. I realize that sometimes I change my mind about things, not usually as quickly as Jesus apparently does in this story. It usually takes me a lot longer to think about things and process information and stories and images and then maybe be able to see things differently from a different perspective. And sometimes I already know what it is I want to believe about something and I just haven't gotten into focus the path for how I can do that with integrity. Changing our minds is hard to do. The United Church of Christ has had a uh, mental health network for decades. There has been a mental health awareness month in this country since 1947. If we easily changed our minds about things, it wouldn't have taken us what is that, 70 years almost, 60-some years, to actually begin talking about mental health in church, in churches like ours. All the United Church of Christ has been doing it for a long time, and many congregations have, have become wise congregations that are um, raising awareness about mental health. We have not picked up on that until only recently. But we can do that. We can change our thinking about this daughter in this story because she represents many people in our lives who perhaps suffer some of the same difficulties. Also coming up for me on this Mother's Day, I thought about Mental Health Month. I thought about my own mother and her mental health and what it must have been like raising nine children and also working and also doing gardening and feeding us. I remember times when my mom would cry about things. For instance, I remember once when I was very young, standing by her as she lay on the bed, crying. When I asked why she was crying, 
turns out she had uh, formulated her will that day. And that was a serious thing. It, that's something that makes us think about our lives. I don't think she was having a breakdown that day. It's just that she was reflecting on her life and its worth and meaning and what her relationships were with all of us, perhaps. There were other times when no doubt she did have breakdowns. And who wouldn't? So I've thought of her as well. I've also thought of a woman named Frances. More so this Mother's Day as I think about Mother's Day in light of mental health awareness. Frances was a woman that was talked about by her family. She was talked about because she'd been through a lot of trauma and tragedy. Early on in her life as a mother, Frances experienced horrible tragedy when her seven-year-old daughter pulled over a pot of boiling water onto herself. And died. I think you'd be an understatement to say Francis never got over that. And yet the conversation in the family would be about, oh gosh, she hasn't changed her daughter's room at all after seven years now. She had trouble dealing with her daughter's death. And that caused me to think of Francis as someone who was weak or not prepared for life somehow. And yet, I don't know how anyone could prepare for such a tragedy as that. And I know this is going to sound like maybe a film or a book of fiction, but this is true. It was probably about 10 years later that I attended a, a funeral, a funeral in our family. And I remember being in the church, walking into the church, I remember sitting down, I remember being seated with the family, when once again, we gathered at a time of grief with Francis to say goodbye to her 19 year old son who was killed in a motorcycle accident. The talk that day as we left the church was about how she was so grief stricken and went up and threw herself on her son in the casket. And I remember thinking at the time because of the stories that I got from people in my family about that event that this was not okay to do. That this was somehow a sign, once again, of maybe weakness or not being well. So this year, as I've thought about May being Mental Health Month, I've thought about Francis a lot. And what I've come to realize about her is that far from not knowing how to deal with those kinds of personal tragedies, is that Frances survived those somehow. She had a strength, she had a hope. She, had, she kept going in her life and lived into her 80s. I don't know how she did that. But I do know this, I can never think of her again as someone who was weak or who couldn't overcome the challenges, the mental and emotional challenges that those kinds of tragedies and trauma bring. I wish I had been able to understand that. I wish I had been able to change my mind about that while Francis was still living. 
But today I do want to tell that story. So I want to say thank you to Francis for the hope and the courage your life demonstrated as a mother for which you never got the credit you deserve. I also thought this week, being Mother's Day week, about Anna Jarvis and also another precursor to our modern Mother's Day. Anna Jarvis, by the way, who's officially credited for starting Mother's Day in this country, basically disowned it a few years later because it became a commercialization and a trivialization, really, of mothers. And, and churches were a great big part of making it that way. In fact, she demonstrated against having Mother's Day later on. But before her came a woman named Julia Ward Howe, who in 1870 wrote the Mother's Day Proclamation. And I defer to Julia Ward Howe, really, for the beginnings, the earliest beginnings of Mother's Day in this country. In her proclamation, she called people to action and asked that mothers unite in promoting world peace. Something that we have forgotten and which Anna Jarvis was right about, that we for many, many years have forgotten that that was actually the beginning of Mother's Day and the reason for it. She campaigned for Mother's Peace Day. So I've thought about that this week and how that really honoring our mothers is about promoting peace and not letting children go off to die in wars. which also combined with me thinking about the anniversary this past week, or the week before, of the Kent State murders, where students demonstrating against a war were executed without trial by the state. Not the pleasant kind of thought we want on a Mother's Day, I know that. You know me, what did you expect? Those demonstrators were demonstrating the meaning and purpose that we all ought to be about, not just on Mother's Day, but every day, and that is bringing peace in our world in a way that doesn't cost the lives of people, whether it's, whether it's in fighting wars, with guns or whether it's in a pandemic. We have a responsibility to continue working for that. Those are not all I thought about in relation to this Mother's Day. I also thought about Jesus. I thought about Jesus hanging, executed on that cross for the cause of what? cause of peace, cause of love, cause of justice, hanging on that cross and saying in that moment to his mother, behold your son as someone who could give her care from then on, saying to the disciple he loved, behold your mother, saying to both of them, you each have a responsibility for each other. What else could be our message at any time, but especially on this Mother's Day? I also thought this past week about the mother of Ahmoud Aubrey, who was gunned down by people who probably knew him back in February, and it took two months for an arrest to be made. I also thought about Ronnie Long, as Corey reminded me yesterday that while we were quick to respond on this killing of Ahmoud, 
We haven't been so quick to respond in Concord. To Ronnie Long's wrongful imprisonment. You see, it's hard for me not to think about these things on Mother's Day and other times. Because I have to think about their mothers, too. There's a part of me that gets overwhelmed by all this tragedy and violence and injustice. And I find myself reaching out for hope and for light. And one of the places that I do that is when I look back in the history of our world and I see the Jewish people who have survived the same way Francis survived, the same way other mothers who have lost children have survived. And some of them have not. This song coming up, Inscription of Hope, reminds me that no matter how bad it gets, reminds me that no matter how many tragedies come, it reminds me that no matter how unjust things are, that we continue to work for justice and for peace in our world and to honor those who've given us birth and life and being. So I need to say before this song, this needs to be read. The Holocaust was a is a stunning reminder of the tragic results of prejudice and hate toward other people. But it is also a reminder that hope held firm will eventually reign victorious over the greatest of odds. The following words that you're going to hear in this song were inscribed on the walls of a cellar in Cologne, Germany, where Jews were hiding from Nazis during World War II. Hope was all they had to hold on to. Hope was their only bridge to a brighter tomorrow.
Thank you, Teresa and Bill, for that. And I'm going to whirl you around here just a minute, folks, and get the camera back to where it needs to be. So, let there be hope. Let there be hope for peace and justice in our world. Let there be hope for overcoming the pain. A mental health that isn't always so healthy. Let there be hope for us as a congregation, as a world, being sensitive to those who are living with mental illness, and to find in them sources of strength and hope ourselves. For our prayer time today, just a couple of folks I want to remind us to remember this week. Uh, Kathy's mother, be remembering her in prayer, also Barbara, uh, Lisa, who is uh, recovering from uh, chemo, and also uh, Sadie's dad, who's also uh, recovering from chemo treatments. Uh, Gail, Karen, Fred, Boyd, Ollie, Sandra, and uh, I didn't see any other requests added on here, and maybe I just missed them. If I did, I'm sorry for that. Um, you can include them today, and we will make sure we uh, remember them during our prayer time on Wednesday evening as well as next Sunday during our worship. A um, couple of things coming up this week, celebrations. One is I want to honor our graduate students today. And just to shout out to Bailey Lowersdorf, who completed her MSW at UNC Charlotte this past week. And also, um, there's one more that I want us to remember. And that is um, someone who used to come to our church and was a part of our church with her husband. And her name is Rachel. And Rachel just completed her Master of Education. I believe that was at UNC Greensboro. And so Bailey and Rachel, we say we honor you. We say job well done and for getting those graduate degrees. And we look forward to hearing more about what's going on in your lives after your graduation. So Bailey, by the way, I wanted to say that Bailey said she got, she just, she posted online capital letters, M-S-W-D-O-N-E, period. So, uh, yeah, we honor you. Congratulations, job well done, both of you. Also, birthdays coming up this week. I know that Aaron has a birthday on the 12th. And a very special birthday shout out today to Bobby. I'm not going to say his last name, but I will just call him Chocolate Chip Cookie Bobby. And I think you will all know who I'm talking about. So there is a surprise coming up for Bobby this Tuesday. And his daughter texted me this morning and said, okay, you can do the surprise during worship online. So what we're going to do this coming Tuesday between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m., Bobby and Elsie, is we're going to drive by your house 
And we're going to shout out birthday wishes to Bobby for his 89th birthday. So I hope if you get a chance, you can drive by and say happy birthday to Bobby and just see his face and shower him with great birthday wishes this coming Tuesday between 4 and 6 p.m. And if you need an address, uh, just let me know and we will get it. Excuse me for that. Thank you, Teresa. So our prayer today is a responsive prayer, and I am going to have to grab a bottle of water, probably, in order to be able to recite it. I may have to have some help. Excuse me just a minute. <coughs> Your response is... Your mercy is great, and that response comes when I say, hear us, God, Jesus, Spirit, Creator, whatever. Hello, Trinity United Church of Christ Facebook. I don't know who will be watching this afternoon, but I wanted to share a prayer from our worship today. We were disconnected for part of the time in our worship service, and it just happened to be during the time when we were going to have the pastoral prayer. And so I wanted to go ahead and share that prayer on this Mother's Day because it is a prayer for Mother's Day. It's written by Leah D. Shade. And uh, I'm really sorry we weren't able to get that on the online worship today because of the disconnect. So this will add part three with the prayer to our worship experience for today online. And I will post these over onto our uh, Trinity Community Corner Facebook group, either tonight or tomorrow. I'll try to do it tonight. But I did wanna share the prayer for today's worship that we would have used had we not been disconnected. So uh, this is the prayers for all women. And again, the response is, Lord, or I'm sorry, the response is, your mercy is great. And uh, the leader, I'm the leader, I will say, uh, hear us, God, Jesus, Spirit, Creator, however we refer to God in that, uh, at that time, hear us, and then the response is, your mercy is great. So let us pray. As God's beloved people, let us pray for the church the whole human family, and God's good creation. We pray for women who are pregnant, those who are waiting with joyful expectation, and those who are filled with uncertainty and fear. We pray for women whose pregnancies are high risk and whose lives are in danger in the birthing process. Hear us, mothering God. Your mercy is great. We pray for women and men who long to be parents, but who struggle with infertility. Join the, their cries with those of Sarah and Abraham, Hannah and Elkanah, Elizabeth and Zecharias, that your will may be done in their lives. Hear us, God of life. Your mercy is great. We pray for women who are mothers, either by birth, by adoption, or through foster care. We pray that they may be supported in their mothering task by the men and other women in their lives, that their children may be provided with sufficient food, shelter, and health care. Hear us, mothering Jesus. Your mercy is great. We pray for women who have lost children, either in utero, through sickness, through war and violence, or through tragic accident. Comfort them, Holy Spirit, with your everlasting presence and assure them of new life. Hear us, mothering Christ. Your mercy is great. We pray for women who are incarcerated, women who have been abusive, women who have been hurtful and neglectful. Hear us, mothering Spirit. 
your mercy is great. We pray for women who give of themselves, not just through childbearing, but through the gift of their intellect, their skills, their gifts, and their physical abilities. Bless all women that they may receive equal compensation for their work. They may be protected from abuse and harassment and may be valued as unique individuals. Hear us, holy God, your mercy is great. We pray for those who are transitioning, those who are seeking to understand who God has created them to be in their bodies, minds, and spirits. May they be protected from danger during their time of vulnerability and guided by those who love and support them. Hear us, holy God, your mercy is great. We pray for women who strive to protect and advocate for those most vulnerable, children, the poor, God's creation, the disenfranchised, other women, and those men and women whose voices go unheard. Hear us, holy Jesus, your mercy is great. We pray for those for whom this day is a day of mourning and sadness. For those who have lost mothers and other important women in their lives, that they may be comforted with the peace that passes all understanding. Hear us, comforting spirit, your mercy is great. We give thanks for women who have been our mothers and grandmothers and aunts and sisters and daughters and life partners and friends. We give thanks for men who have mothered us with their own caring, affection, nurturing, and friendship. We lift to you now the names of those who have mirrored your mothering spirit, holy God, and we call their names aloud wherever we are. Give them your grace and bless them in their lives. Hear us, mothering God, your mercy is great. We pray for others, our church prays for others. We as individuals pray for others, for all those we name, O oh God, and for those who have no one to name them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy God, we lift our prayers to you through the Holy Spirit and hope entrusting all for whom we pray to your great goodness and mercy, made known to us in Christ our Savior. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us and we pray it together. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you have had and are having a wonderful Mother's Day. And I hope this prayer also helps with just understanding a lot of the complexities present on a day like today where there are many emotions going on and we're trying to honor women. So I hope you have a good evening. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you've enjoyed beautiful weather where you are. We have certainly had that here. And I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning 11 a.m. and hopefully next time our connection will be more solid online and we won't lose you and you won't lose us during our worship service. Until then, may you go in peace and may you know God's care. Sooner or later, it was bound to happen. We lost the signal. We're back now just to close our worship service.
gifts, O oh God, we give you thanks for those given here, those in person, those mailed in, and those donated online. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to support the ministries, the ongoing ministries of this congregation. Bless them. May they bless the lives that they are given to serve. In Christ's name, amen. Be safe when you go out. Help keep others safe. Wear your mask. Continue to physically distance yourself from others outside where you live. Be kind to each other and give each other hope for a better tomorrow. Amen. Sorry about our technical difficulties at the end of our worship today. Thank you once again for joining Trinity Online Worship. And thank you if you're watching this at some time other than on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Join us again next week, same time, same place. And share the love when you share the link to our Facebook page. Click invite and go in peace.